Hi, I'm Ryan, and welcome to my coding bootcamp journey. In this series, I will share my experiences as I learned to code through Flatiron School's web development program. If you know anyone that does uh, enjoy that would enjoy this series, uh, please send them to the link at the bottom of your screen. So before I actually get get start get started here, um, I do want to say hello to my new subscribers. So um, I, I definitely uh, appreciate you uh, watching my videos. Um, when I started started this, uh, didn't really have an audience in in mind. Um, I just uh, want wanted to make sure that I was always re reviewing the Im information I was that I would I was lear learning, and also kind of a side effect is you know in this day and age uh learning uh learning to be a soft learning up leveling up your skills to become a software developer is a pretty nebulous um you know back back when i when i was in high school and going you know going into college uh it was a lot more straightforward like com companies wouldn't even talk talk to you if you didn't have a uh, computer science degree and the the path was a lot more straightforward now you know you can you know you you can learn you, you can learn on your own i you can still follow the computer science science route and now with co with coding boot camps i mean there's just so many routes that you can take and even after you uh become a developer there's uh there's a lot a lot of routes you can take and there I, I had hadn't seen a lot of videos that really kind of go, you know, to, I, I hadn't seen a lot of these kinds of videos. So I just figure, hey, let's, you know, let's, you know, I, I, I'm planning on doing this anyway. Let's put it, let's go ahead and put it up on YouTube and see, see what happens. So, so I definitely appre appreciate uh, you uh, subscribing and checking out my videos. So what is new uh, this week? So I finished up with uh, validators uh, that, you know, they check to make sure that you're not trying to input bad, bad data into the into the database and then CRUD, which that, that's uh, those are data, database um, actions that create, read, update, delete or destroy or, you know, and and I uh, made some uh, progress on associations with uh, web web forms. Now, what I mean by asso associations is well, let's let's take uh, let, I'll, I'll use my uh, packlist uh, pandemonium app as uh, as an as an example. So, a user has many lists. List a list belongs to a user. A user has many items through lists, so it's just how the the different tables and whatnot relate relate to each relate to each other, like which which one actually has ownership and and that kind of thing. And so I've been learning how to really really mix CRUD actions with with uh, associate you know with uh, the because. Uh, for, forms are kind of done in its own way in Rails, and of course, there's a lot of ma magic, magic that go goes on in the background. But um, you know, really, what I say by magic is they take take a lot of the 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 minutia of uh, of 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 these uh, of of these di different uh, tasks, um, and and uh, kind of creates a much more sem semantic way of ac accomplishing this accomplishing these things so instead of okay i need i need this form to be associated with this particular da data point and so i need so it it takes away a lot of the the Again, the the very tiny uh, tasks that I was lear I was learning er earlier, like uh, like in, uh, late, like er in early in the Sinatra module. So, uh, but in anyway, so I've been lear learning uh, learning. So, so yeah.
And as far as struggles, um, I'll just say the labs. <laughs> no, that's not a cop out. Um, and what what I mean by that is labs are at in uh, well at at the beginning of this module, it explained that the tests weren't going to be as straightforward because in the in the previous you know before starting you know th this module has been mostly okay you know write code to make this test pass and they're often very explicit about what what they were what you know what they were look, looking for and well i'm not saying that the tests haven't have stopped being like, explicit cuz they're still looking for specific data but um, it, it's not, uh, getting the test to pass now, um, uh, involves more, uh, more, uh, look, looking at buggy or incomplete code. So it's more of a debugging process than just, just write, writing the code that, that, uh, that, uh, to get the test to pass, which is a little bit, which is, you know, more of a real life scenario, um, that I highly doubt that I'm going to be, you know, when, when I'm finished and, you know, I'm in my first uh, dev, dev job, I highly doubt that I'm going to be writing something from scratch. More than likely, I'm going to be going into a situation where they already have a legacy code base that they're already, they're already doing ma maintenance on. And, you know, it's I'm, more of my job is going to in, involve debugging. Like here, we we have a you know a low hanging you know a pretty, pretty a relatively easy you know bu bug or or itch you know it, issue to to resolve. How about you you know? And then that that involves debugging. <laughs> you know that that involves go reading reading through the code and trying to see see what see what it's doing. And trying to fig figure out a figure out a solution, and the, this week uh, that that really that really came to bear, uh, where more and more of the labs in, involved do, doing that, not you know just writing writing the code that'll get the test to pass. It's you know okay they, you know um, yeah uh, just re reading through. Um, they they already have like a number of files with you know co with code in it and you know they may like not have one or one or two lines of code or it's not you know it's like strong params aren't writ written properly and and you know to the the routes not uh not spelled spelled cor correctly and you know that and that that kind of thing and i have to uh so so yeah the um I would say th those uh, were my struggles, but uh, while while I'm still on the subject, I have to uh, give a shout out to our tech technical coaches. Uh, jokingly, I posted in our uh, Slack Slack channel that I op opened a petition on Change.org to change their title from "Ask a Question" to "Lifesavers." <laughs> I totally didn't. I totally didn't go on Change.org to start a petition, but. Uh, but yeah, this this week they were re really helpful in help helping me fig figure out uh, like weird uh, er errors that I that I was seeing and you know the places I had you know I uh, the, and things to consider and really really help helped helped me out a lot a lot this week. So just just wanted to give a shout out there. And as far as uh, victories, this um, th this isn't uh, just uh, th this week. It's been um, is uh, descriptive answers uh, from my cohort lead during our weekly one on ones. And I, again, this isn't it. Didn't just start start this week. Um, he'd always give given very descriptive answers and. Uh, I, I just for for one reason or another I just I just noticed it more this week. Um I had asked him just just as a curiosity question. Um for, first off if he had any uh in, any experience with low level language like C or Rust or C++ which is 
you know, no, another one. And, and I had, I had asked him if come, you know, coming from our, from, you know, come higher level, uh, programming language, like any, any of the web, uh, web development languages like HTML, C- CSS, J- JavaScript, Ru- Ruby, Py- Python. I'm not going to list them all, but uh, but none of these languages actually deals uh, actually deal directly on on the metal. All all of them de- depend on some kind of abstraction provided by lower level languages it's usually like c c c plus plus and st- and things of that nature and so i had a- asked him if coming from a higher level language if learning a lower level language was akin to it was like comparing apples to oranges or apples to boots <laughs> and uh you know because i didn't know how much of a delineation there 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 was and he's like well in some ways it's apples to oranges in other ways it's apples to boots so uh and then he went um went went on about you know how to uh, like le- learning learning a, 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 a second language and some tips as far as le- learning that so um it, it was definitely more than what i asked for but it's def it's <laughs> it's definitely in- information that i appreciated uh, i'm definitely not uh making any concrete or or even abstract <laughs> plans to to learn c or or in or any of the other low lower level languages it's just i something i i i was curious about and uh so yeah i definitely appreciate that he gave that i uh, gave a more thorough answer than i than than i needed so yeah and what am i looking forward to so uh recently one of our educational co- coach has uh taken to uh post posting uh daily stand-ups in our slack channel and in like one, you know, what did you do yesterday? What do you plan to do today? Do you have any blockers? And she always, she always posts a fourth kind of like off the wall question. Like when, you know, when was the last time you went somewhere that, you know, away from your hometown or, you know, what, uh, what, what animal are you most afraid of? <laughs> that was the uh most recent one and so i'm looking forward to you know kind of learn learning a little bit more uh my uh, other cl- classmates as far as that you know the question number four so uh i know i know it's something little but uh but i i always kind of look forward to it every, every morning it's like okay what what uh what what other question is she going to come up with today so yeah um so yeah i that's uh all i have for you this week so i do thank you for watching if you want to stay up to date please like and subscribe and feel free to check out the rest of this series and if you do have any comments or questions please post them below and i'll see you in the next chapter